Welcome to Weld.com. We did an episode where we, we demonstrated proper cleaning methods <clears throat> that we use. Uh, and, and in part two of this episode, we want to weld over some of these items that we had cleaned. Rusty carbon steel, and we cleaned it back to pure metal. Uh, new steel with just a mill scale on it. And we cleaned a piece of aluminum. We cleaned a piece of stainless steel. So now we want to weld on these items and show how they're going to react. The first thing we're going to do, and I've already pulled out a bunch of bullets here because I know I'm going to go through them. We're going to make a weld on some nasty rusty TIG weld, gas tungsten arc welding, on some rusty material. We're going to change electrodes and do it on some clean metal. I will run a 1 filler wire. Probably not, well, I'll try to on here because this has some deoxidizers. I'm not going to save this, I can assure you. Everlast 200 dV, I'm running on 110 volts, which gives me a maximum of 125 amps. Pure Argon 15 CFH, 332nd E3 tungsten. So let's have a little fun here. I expect this to be a sparkle show immediately. You ready? Unstable arc crusty around the edges, porosity. I'm adding filler wire to kind of get rid of that. It's actually welding better than I f expected it to. You know, I guess I don't know what happens in this situation because I don't ever do this. I always clean my material. <clears throat> okay, when I first started out, you know, this, because of the rust, I mean, it just, I knew it was going to kind of bubble up a little bit. We've got a nice little pucker hole of porosity here at the start. I started adding wire and, you know, probably because of the deoxidizers in ER70S6, which would be manganese and silicone, things settled down a little bit. It welded way better than I expected it to. I think, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, I don't ever do this. So I, I always clean my material, especially on carbon steel and aluminum. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna do another bead about a half inch or an inch away from this just to see what it's gonna do. I may not run any filler for a second. My tungsten stayed way cleaner than I expected it to. Now I'm not running any filler wire here purposely. Really crusty, a lot of porosity. I'm gonna run one more. I'm gonna back off the heat a little bit and try to do better for the material and dab some filler wire in here on the leading edge. Just to say that I ran a bead on crappy material. So in this second one, we have a lot of indications of porosity, not so much in the middle start. Middle's real flat. I wasn't at full amperage. I wasn't at 125. I'm kind of feathering the foot pedal and looking at the width of the bead. And then again, down here at the, at the end of the bead, when it, right before I terminated, a lot more porosity. I came back the third time, got off the heat quite a bit and dabbed the filler wire in here tried to build it up a little bit. It did better. But again, I, I don't recommend this at all. And I know some people have, they have new machines and they're wanting to practice and they're at home and they get anything and they start running beads on it. And I'm going, that, you know, that's good. But let's take a few seconds to clean our material. Now this tungsten is really not in that bad of shape. Not as bad as I expected it to be. It's really not that bad, but I am going to change it. I'll give you guys the satisfaction of a fresh bullet. I'm using a number five cup. Again, 15 CFH. I may go get a number eight here in a minute when I get to the bigger stuff. Or the bigger stuff, the aluminum and the stainless. We'll see what happens with it. Okay, stick out. I get a lot of questions on how far you can stick your tungsten out. General rule, whatever the inside diameter of the nozzle, that's about how far you can stick it out. However, when you get into gas lenses, 
and you have the benefit of a screen and a shield and it helps break up and permeate the argon flow, you can stick your tungsten out quite a ways and get into some tight spots with them. All right, here we go. So here's the first bead on the nasty, rusty material that we cleaned up. I'll run one with filler wire. This is what we cleaned with the quarter inch grinding wheel. It's acting okay. I'll run one without filler wire. And we had no porosity there. I'll run another one a little hotter. Got a little weld pool wander. Kind of normal for me. <coughs> Much better results. Much better results. So first bead with a little filler wire, second one without and third one where I ran a little hotter with filler wire. No reaction to porosity. The weld pool kind of wanders somewhat because it really doesn't have a place to go. It's out on the flat plate. I expect that. A lot of times in our exercises here in, the, in our coursework, we'll run beads every process, stick, MIG, TIG, flux, we'll, we'll get used to the process by running beads. The first one always seems to yeah, we want to run it in a straight line, but it doesn't really lay down that well. It kind of moves around a little bit. And then we run in subsequent beads into the toe of that one, and everything straightens up and acts nice. So here's our piece of new steel that we would order that has a light mill scale on it. And we have the clean part down here. Now, having welded on this nasty, rusty stuff, and it kind of did way better than I thought it would, this ought to be okay, but I still expect to see some crusties coming off the edges of it here. So, first bead on mill scale, unclean new material. All right, first bead, unclean steel. I'm gonna go ahead and do this without filler wire. And this thing is like spitting like crazy. Wow, I'd rather weld on rusted material than this. Gross. You know, to, to just glance at it, it looks okay. But what I'm going to do here real quick is change. I'm going to change electrodes and then run filler wire. This is the second bead on unclean material that has mill scale on it. And it is acting way better, more than likely because I am adding filler wire that has a deoxidizer in it. Again, I don't like it. I don't like what's on the edge of this. I, I see the edges of it being a little unstable. Mill scale is not good to weld over. I don't think I even want to run a third bead I don't think there's going to be anything different. Now I want to show what's going to happen on the part that we cleaned and got the mill scale off of. Way cleaner, way cleaner. And here we go with filler wire. So we started out on unclean material, mill scale over here, real fluttery sparkle show going on. Although, you know, this is obviously cleaner than the rust and it welded worse. It's just a, I mean, it's just a reaction. It's got moisture trapped in there. It's just, it's, it's just not good. 
And then we ran some filler wire, which was better, more than likely because of the deoxidizer in the wire. But again, we have this stuff lined up on the toe of the weld. Uh, it's just, it's not good practice, okay? It's always good to clean your material. I came over here and just as soon as I struck an arc, it kind of blew up. So I may not have cleaned that as well as I thought I did. Moved away from it. I changed the electrode because it did contaminate the electrode. Moved away from it, ran a bead over here and it was just fine. And then ran one with filler wire, which is way good as far as the color and the edges. We don't have a bunch of garbage lined up on the toe of the weld. So I hope that makes sense. There's a big difference between cleaning your material and welding over mill scale, rust, and stuff like that. So while I am still on the DC mode, DCEN, I'm gonna go ahead and grab the stainless. And we have just, you know, as you bring me a piece of stainless, it's got the normal finish from the mill, and I'm just wiping it off. I expect it to weld okay. I don't think there's gonna be an issue with any of that. And then we're gonna weld down here. You may notice some slight differences, but I don't think they're gonna be that much. I am using a 1 16th uh, 308L on this just to run some filler wire. A 304 stainless. Very clean, normal stainless weld. I'll do one with filler wire. Same thing, I mean, it, uh, you know, the, the, uh, it's sitting out here on a flat plate. The bead really doesn't have a place to go. Uh, the bead shape is okay. Now I'm gonna do the same thing down here on the part that we cleaned. This welded okay in the condition that it's in. So I wanna run a bead over here on the part that we sanded. No filler wire, no reaction. It welded slightly cleaner. Seemed like it flowed better than, than the uh, normal condition. And then we'll come in here and dab some filler wire and see what happens. Hardly any concern right there with all of those, you know. It's just good to wipe it down and clean it off. Not like carbon steel where we get uh, mill scale or rust, but again, wiping it down, you can sand it a little bit. I didn't notice a whole lot of difference between the two of them, okay? So there's three material types. Uh, give me a sec, I need to change to uh, alternating current on the machine, I'll be right back. Wow, this is strange. Man, I'm glad that happened. I hope the camera picked up all of that. <clears throat> so here we have a piece of aluminum we didn't do anything with over here. Had the watermark, some dirt crust. I don't, again, I don't know where it came from. 
good aluminum, 6061 aluminum, but I don't know how it was stored and what was happening with it. So when we first started running this bead, it's a little clean and then we had this dirty stripe down through the middle. I actually got a weld pool to begin with. The machine acted like it wasn't ground and it cut a little bit, but then I got into this crusty stuff, no weld pool. Uh, it just kind of, it, it went away. I wasn't getting a pool at all. Obviously this stuff is an oxide layer plus the dirt plus everything else. Uh, you know, aluminum melts 11, 1200 degrees depending on alloy. This stuff obviously melts way higher. As soon as I moved off of it, I went back to a nice clean weld pool. And this is the part that I hadn't cleaned at all. But again, it kind of came into a nice weld pool. I don't know how many more times I can do that and anything clear up or weld different. I could probably try to add filler wire to it. It's not going to weld good. We might as well go ahead and try it. but. We expect some pretty rank results here. I have a 332-4043. Yep, that's 4043. Well, we had a bad reaction right off the bat there. From yeah, we're picking up a lot of crust. I got. I got nothing. I can't even continue on with that pool, but the first thing that happened was we got a really nice booger on the end of our aluminum filler wire from picking up crap off the edge of this when we started. So since I did weld over the top of some of that Stuff. I'm going to go ahead and change bullets for you here and put a fresh one in, reload, and we're going to go down here on the part that we cleaned. I am going to do one more thing here. Uh, we had to find folks from Blue Demon send a sample of an acetone wipe. I think these things are pretty cool. They last about two minutes, three minutes or so, but for cleaning parts, cleaning filler wire, cleaning stuff, you got your nice little acetone pad here and you can even wipe your filler wire down with it. Woo, we got some junk on there. Didn't expect that. Here's a lesson for you folks right here. Take a look at that. You got a nice little amount of black goo coming off of you, just a, what you'd think would be a clean filler wire. If some of you have wondered why you get black specks floating in your weld pool, this may be the culprit right cheer. I made a mess. I had some I had some boo-boos over here and you know in a way I'm glad it happened. It happens to me and me only. I know everybody's an expert at aluminum welding and this never happens to them so anyway uh, you know well, we started out on the aluminum and uh, we, we attempted to run a bead on the unclean as-is condition. It kind of started went across the dirty water mark, nothing happened over there, and then got over here on some cleaner material, and all of a sudden we got a weld pool. We weren't running filler wire. And then I attempted to come over here and run some filler wire, and just starting out, it just, it just went away completely. It's a black mess. It's horrible. I came over here where I was gonna, on my clean part, and I was gonna run some filler wire. As soon as I started, it did the same thing over here. It kind of dawned on me I needed to go for a, I needed to go for a bigger cup. I started out doing this on a number five. So I, I grabbed a bigger cup. I went to a number eight and also turned my gas up to about 25, 30 CFH. And that tends to help me on aluminum anyway. I tend to run a little bit more gas, argon flow around aluminum. Uh, still had a little bit of an issue 
and I changed the machine. I realized the machine was on a, a higher frequency than what I probably wanted to do just for, got all that set, boom, we took off and ran a nice bead. So, you know, things happen. Uh, with me in aluminum, it's either good or bad. You know, it's either running really good or it just goes away like this black mess that I put in there for you. So, hey, I'm human and I will fess up to all my mistakes. Better I'll grab a sanding wheel real quick and hide them from you, but hey, it happens. The main thing about all of this is, you know, clean your material, do everything that you can, even, and it doesn't take very long. Proper safety gear, the right abrasives, uh, clean your material, do your material prep, because, and especially on the aluminum. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching Weld.com.